Hi, how you doing? Hey, Welcome everybody. to the RDRV channel. Tonight's Q&A, where we attempt to answer all your questions about stained glass. My name's Barb. And I'm Ed. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. I hope everyone is doing well tonight. Yeah, and had a beautiful weekend. And uh, unless you're up north, <laughs> you got snow dumped again this weekend. Uh, we actually woke up Saturday morning. And we had about two inches of snow. Wow. In the front yard here in South Carolina. So that was awesome. We hardly ever get to see that. But everybody, welcome to the channel tonight. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in. It's um, it's a beautiful Monday night. And I don't know how many of y'all caught that sunset. but uh, Here in South Carolina, we had a beautiful sunset tonight. The sky was what? pink and purple, y'all. Yes. It Absolutely. Was it was gorgeous. A, a beautiful beautiful sunset so that's right so tonight uh, we're going to answer your questions we're going to start with a Q&A so uh, bring us your questions we got some questions coming in and um, then we are going to do the glass chat it's got something he wants to chat about Ch -ch chat and then he's going to do a glass demo yeah. So, yeah, so we'll we, show you not a new tool tonight, but just how to use an existing tool. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, we'll just start right in with the questions. Um, so stick with us. Don't go away. We're starting up our questions here on the RDRV channel live Q&A on Monday night. Okay, let's see if I can get this uh, computer to do what it's supposed to do. I guess everything's okay. Sound check. One, two, sound check. We're okay. good. Okay, so hi, Ray. How you doing? Ray, good, good evening. Good to hear from you. Um, Ray wants to know, how were the stained glass windows that you made attached to the inner glass of your project you just showed us? With love, Ray. <laughs> we'll have that in the video. We'll have more about that in the last video, but go ahead. Yeah, so uh, basically, of course, the, the windows fit each individual opening. And, uh, and then we used what's called a half by half uh, in the storefront industry or the glazing industry. It's a half by half pre-punched. Pre-punched meaning there are holes every 12 inches. And so we used a half by half pre-punched stop and then we, you know, set it in the opening, drilled the hole, and then ran, um, we ran a pan head in it just so that, uh, and then we touched up all the screw heads. But we did use a half by half uh, piece of aluminum channel that is pre-punched and pre-drilled. Yeah, and then for the curves, he actually bent that. Right across the edge of the, <laughs> of the scissor lift. Yeah. That wasn't that much. Job. It was a radius. It was, it was a, a 12 foot radius. radius. Yeah, yeah, it was a 12 foot radius, but it was just like this much of it each time. So it wasn't any it big wasn't deal. Anything that wasn't anything. Wasn't any difficult. sense in paying somebody to bend the aluminum when I have the capabilities myself to do it. So. Now, um, ideally, we would be there when they install the window. I mean, you know, we would be commissioned when they install a window, and then we would have the. Uh, metal company cut all the stops for us and they would fit right in the window and we wouldn't have to right they would cut just sit there stops. until we were ready to put the windows in so normally i work with the, another glazing company that they would do that for us and sometimes um it works out that way and that's just that's really nice so everything fits yeah. perfect and saves you a lot of time it does and in <laughs> case anybody out there is wondering about condensation between the two panes you never seal your windows in okay the outside piece of glass protects the glass, keeps the weather off of it. But this this goes in, and you don't you don't seal it. You want the air to be able to dry and move through it, and uh, you know because you got it, this is in a gallery, so you can imagine how the humidity has to stay inside that room anyway, with you know hundred year old artifacts in it, or sometimes. 500 year old artifacts who knows right barb i know yes so um i think the humidity are you talking about in the gallery yeah the humidity, so. humidity i think was 21 percent or something right. like that and then the uh temperature was constant 70 degrees i think i read that right i, I think 
I, it, I know it was something. I know it was very it was hot in that ceiling when it was like cold outside. They had the heat cranking inside the gallery while we were working, and it was hot in that ceiling. Hot, it hot, was. Hot. It was. It so was. hey, Bart, let's take a minute and say hi to everybody that's tuned in. I know. I was in. just awesome. looking here. Um, do you want me to uh, say hello to everyone that's here? Say hi, uh, Allison, Mimi, Julie, Joyce, Ray is here. Um, of course, Brenda's here. Hey, uh, Karen Mills. Um, and we've got questions. Marion's here as well. Good. But yeah, everybody's so here. So hi, Magali's everybody. here. Great. Thanks for so tuning in tonight. we've got people from all over the country, and it's great to see everyone. Great to hear. Brenda Craig is here. Hi, hey, Brenda. Brenda. From Wichita. So we've got people that tune in from all across the country and actually from around the world. And when Ed and I taught classes, well, mostly Ed, uh, we had hundreds of students from right here, lo well, thousands locally. locally so yeah. it's really exciting to now be talk talk uh, talking to students and teaching students from around from the world. From around the world. And just, it just not, I don't know if it's like teaching. Well, I guess you are. You're learning at your own pace and we're trying to help you all that we can. So, you know, if you're, uh, if, if what we're doing is helping you out, and hopefully uh, allowing you to move forward within uh, your process of working within this glass industry, then, then we've done what we're supposed to do, which is help you move forward and learn as much as you can about the project. So, uh, Another question, Ray wanted to know how many pieces of glass there were in the window. Around 3,400, 3,500, uh, give or take 50 or 60. Um, we might sit down and make absolutely sure of the exact I, Ray, I still have the pattern hanging on the wall in the stained glass room. I just, uh, it takes up the whole wall and it's actually a, a nice, a nice addition. But it's getting ready to come down because I got some, uh, got some other stuff got to put big, on the walls. Another big project coming up, no, y'all. Yeah, we another, some, Well, we have some restoration. Whopper, yeah. Restorations and then a whopper coming up. And then we so. have a whopper project <laughs> coming up so that uh, we'll start. As soon as I get back... Um, Back on my feet again. We'll be jamming. Um, so, yeah, a lot of y'all have tuned in tonight, and it's awesome. Uh, Brenda, it was great chatting with you today. We're happy for you that you won the 15-minute chat about... That was uh, uh, Brenda Craig. Yeah, Brenda Craig. I'm sorry. Brenda Craig, and it was great chatting with you today. So, uh, we look forward to uh, working with you and maybe answering some more of your questions later on. Um, so Brenda Mickley asked a uh, question. Do you use any tool to polish your finished product examples being a brush on drill or Dremel? I do not use a brush on anything mechanical but my arm. But we we've, use acid we've brushes. done it before. We have when you're like a big, a lot of windows. We've used the buffing pad the cotton pad on a uh, car buffer the two hand and you don't have to put any pressure on it all you do is clean it up it it makes short work of it but you have to be careful if mm -hmm. you get it caught sideways it'll hang up and it'll break the glass so you have to be real careful real slow until you get the hang of it once you get the hang of it man it's you're, you're on it's and on you're talking then. about like a little car buffer not a drill or a drill no i'm talking about a, a car b buffing the uh, way on big windows is when we've used on it, big yes. windows yeah when if you, we had a lot if we had a lot of but like we we putty glaze these windows from the project we just installed with just a brush and uh, some other brushes um but yes. mainly an acid brush in a circular motion, polishes lead really well, right, Barb? Yeah, and we have some videos on that. We in, do. In fact, in the Brook Green Project videos, there's a video on how we finish, and that is the next question as well uh, from Marion Wagner. Hey, Marion. I used your glazing recipe, and I found some sections of my glass had tiny little holes the size of a pinhead. And the glazing mixture got into the holes. Is there any way to prevent this? No. 
There's yeah. no way to prevent it from getting like in there. Like a CD glass. A or CD something. glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, the other thing is, is you have to be real careful if you've got a lot of seeds in the glass. You don't want to rub it all over the glass because the putty only has to go on the edge, you know, in the, in the lead itself. So confine your work to yourself. You can take a Q-tip with a little bit of lacquer thinner on it and dab it in there and sponge it out. It'll come right out. So just, yeah. uh, but if you have those things, okay, it's nothing with the glazing compound. It's just, if you got a lot of seeds in your glass, you need to uh, make sure you drop back and not only clean it real well, but you don't have to cover all the glass with the glazing compound. What you have to be concerned about is working the edge of the lead and the edge of the glass. That's yes. all you have to be concerned about. Same way when you're working with bevels. You yeah. don't want to throw that or glaze, glue chip. Or a glue chip. Think about that nightmare trying to clean yeah. that. It's a lot bevel. easier to take a Q-tip and go around the edge and clean the glue chip and then polish Stay it with white. Stay to the edges, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to smear it all over the place. Please don't. Uh, no, you're just asking for more work, that's all. So, yes, there is a way to avoid it. Just and avoid if you can, it. <laughs> if you can imagine all of the um, textured glasses we used in the Live Oak project. Yeah, that was a lot. So, you know, we were using wire brushes to get them out of the cracks. Right, I mean, within the few minutes after we puttied the window, we were we were having to polish and get those get that right out of those cracks just as, just as absolutely as quick as possible so that it didn't dry. Yes. So Ray said, wow, that's a lot of cutting. It was. It, it was. was. <laughs> and it was all done on the light box too, Ray. Yeah. And and you guys saw a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, you guys saw a lot of it. Uh, you know what was really cool about that whole project is that the, uh, the donors were there um, on day two. Mm-hmm. And um, I got a, just a, Barbara and I got this really big smile and this. And you know what? That was all we needed because we knew that we had done our job when the corporation that donated that window and paid for it gave us a thumbs up and a, just a big happy smile. That was awesome. Yeah, and it's awesome that we have people in this world that appreciate stained glass and appreciate fine craftsmanship and um, oh yeah so and so it gives us the opportunity to um, make our art and the streeters strike again yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that is that was a beautiful it. large we appreciate you all hanging in, uh, yeah. in there with us because we and thought we'd never finish too just watching that whole project <laughs> you know start to finish and you know it we uh we were done and things just kept getting pushed back, not because of weather or this and that. Different shows, different coming, shows in, coming, coming in. Different shows coming in. Out and, and, you know, these galleries, they pay for these shows to come in. So you can't really interrupt and that. Then, and, and Brook Green is so pleasant for us to work with. We have a long-term relationship with them. And we... Um, well, we treasure it working was a joy with them. To yeah. work oh, with gosh. Them. It's, and, it's awesome. And yeah. I hope that y'all... When you get a chance to come to South Carolina, just keep in mind that Brook Green Gardens is one of the top 10 sculpture gardens in the country. In the country, y'all. Yeah. So just Google it and you'll find out all the great things about them. Um, Ray um, asked, how many total hours did you have in the project? That's a good question. That is a good question, Ray. Wow. A lot. We should have kept up with it better. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I would think we worked on it probably. Wait. If you added it up, but I, you know what? I really never worked on that window solid more than three or four days at a time, a week. Right. So three or four days a week, eight hours a day. 24 hours. 24 hours a week, week times. Uh, twenty eight weeks. Maybe. maybe you should have charged more. <laughs> yeah, twenty eight weeks. Maybe a thousand weeks. hours, maybe, right? Yeah, something like that. No, I don't. No, know. it wasn't that much. Well, you know what? It it's not that it's it. 
again, y'all, it's not about the money because you know we we gave some of that uh, the installation of that window in kind, um, and that was um, anyway. That was that was our part of the process. So uh, yeah, I don't know that it was it. quite a thousand hour. Well, well, you know what? We'll look at it and see, but um, yeah. a lot. We should know how many hours, but you know, a lot of times you're you're working and then you're waiting on another process. Like the painting uh, took a while, so we were kind of involved with the painting for a couple, three or four weeks. We were just painting, right? So and that's a different, you know, that process takes twenty the, hours. The in bottom, one day, so. yeah, the bottom four panels A, B, C, and D. We cut those out first. And I cut those out in about nine days, those four but panels. But then we have other projects that come in and things have to be moved. And it's so... It's all, we multitask all the time. We have more than one project. Well, like right now in the stained glass room, we have five projects going on. And uh, Barbara's working on part of one project for us. She's taking care of the painting. And when the paintings are done, then I'll take over and we'll move on to the next phase of that particular job. So we we do a lot of different things, and um, that was Ray's uh, question. Were we also working on other projects while oh, we were doing yeah, this project? Yes, sure, yes. Sure. We couldn't we couldn't uh, dedicate ourselves because well, there were times that we had to do. You know, we well, had the other project. Well, we probably in. put twenty five shower doors <laughs> in while we were working on the Brook Green project. Yeah, yeah. So we we probably put twenty five heavy glass really nice elegant shower doors in in that process too and i'm done with that y'all well i put my last shower door in last yeah, week yeah we don't think he's going to be able to do shower doors after this um after the surgery that's coming up on february 7th it's going to make him feel so good yeah and we don't want to you know what the the thing i don't want to do is i've waited so long for this that i don't want to mess it up and um uh, so anyway uh, That's my story, Ray, and I'm sticking to it, buddy. <laughs> so, Sunshine uh, M said that um, she works on projects and sometimes, um, you know, six months. Yeah, it's not unusual because you have to order the supplies, you have to get the colors right. You know, that all takes months. So, and waiting, yeah. you know, and then you have your tables tied up while you're waiting. Oh, and with the supply chains the way they are now. And that's what, you know, that's, that's another what part Sunshine of it. Sunshine was saying, yeah. yeah. So due to supply shortages, it, it does take longer, right. definitely. And now we have increased prices. So so those jobs that we quoted last year that we got are costing us more money to do. So that just means we have to work smarter, not harder. So. You are going to be a new man after surgery. You the man, Ed. Uh -huh. We can't wait. We can't wait to go for walks again. I know it, man. I am so looking forward to it. And you know, Dixie, she's ready to probably start going back for walks too. She misses that. I hope so. I hope we can do, do yeah, that. Dixie yeah, Dixie misses that a lot. So Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Any questions, go ahead and ask us. Uh, we'll be happy to We'll be happy answer to answer them. them. Uh just put them in the chat. Put them in the chat if you have a question. Uh, here's a question. Brenda. What do you suggest using to get little metal burrs off? Example, wire ends that is not hidden under the solder or small solder balls that don't come off easily for sun catcher. Nippers. Yeah, the very tip of your lead nippers, you can you can get that off if if uh, little solder balls. Um, I'm not, you know, the, solder balls. That, yeah, you, they you should, should be able just, to get those off. You should have those off. They should just you flick do. off with Sometimes your. Sometimes you can just pop them off. Yeah, they should because even if they're dropping on if they're dri dropping on something else, usually they don't stick to it, but enough just to flip it with your 
with your fingernail, I think. So, but um, yeah, you can use the tips of your lead nippers to uh, get those those little uh, burrs off. The, the best thing to get the burrs off is just to touch it again with your soldering iron and clean it up. That's the best thing to do. Clean it up with your soldering iron. If you're getting little burrs, guess what? Your iron is too cold. <laughs> Mimi says you're going in for your own restoration surgery. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so he's having surgery Monday next Monday night so um, I doubt we'll have a live stream next Monday night it'd probably be more like Wednesday or something but I'm going to post something on the community page so everybody knows that he's doing great and when the next time we'll get to see Mr. Streeter on YouTube we might do a live stream from the house or something I don't, I don't know we'll, we'll have see. to see I have to ask the doctor the doctor doesn't care. <laughs> the doctor doesn't care. He does care. He well, better you can care. ask him. And don't forget to ask him if you can play the guitar after you get this surgery. Yeah. Okay? Y'all, I can tell you a story, and maybe it'll make you laugh. But Barbara and I, at one time, we had this employee, and he was the nicest guy in the world. And uh, But, you know, he was had a lot of kids and a wife and, you know, a lot of things. And... Bless his heart, he needed glasses. So we took him over to Sears, and he tells the, he asked the optometrist, he's all excited about getting new, getting glasses because he'd never had glasses before, and and I knew it was a benefit to the company to, to buy glasses. He could not, he oh couldn't see gosh. that far in front of him. So anyway, we're sitting there, and he, the optometrist is, you know, getting him all straightened out and everything, and he says, "Well, am I?" Am I um, am I going to be able to play the guitar after I get my new glasses? And uh, the optometrist says, "Well, you know, I don't, I don't sure. see why not." Sure, he said. Lloyd says that's great because I couldn't play it when I got here, and that's going. My wife's going to love that. <laughs> so anyway, that's an old joke, but I'm an old guy. And he, but it's a true story because true I was story. listening to it. I actually heard him tell the optometrist that. So Linda is here from Maryland. Karen, Karen is sending prayers our way. Um, thank you. Thank you for the prayers and the good wishes. Oh, and, yeah. They're all really, really appreciated, y'all. Yeah. Uh, Sunshine said it's hard to complete a project when the when the glass is so hard to find that, you know, that you need. So, yeah, it is. It is. I've learned. Um, Ray said that was a good one. I've learned just a lot of. Uh, searching for glass in a lot of different places and you know you keep your eyes open a lot of people are yeah. downsizing every day I hear people finding uh, wonderful well I heard a story stash, today from stashes uh, of glass from uh, yeah from Brenda Brenda Craig um, she just for sale she had to drive a long time but she able to find 45 large sheets of glass i'm talking large 32 She's by 42. Here. Brenda's here. i think brenda's here she told me the story today and i'm like oh my gosh and then she sent me some pictures and it was just really y'all may remember brenda she she was a first timer on our channel yeah. and she actually won the 15 minute quick check with ed about whatever she wanted to talk about for 15 minutes so. yeah that was funny she said she was uh scrolling through youtube and just happened to find the live and she logged in and she won and so she that won was we had a drawing cool. like two minutes after she logged in so <laughs> anyway so she it, got that. it was great talking to you today brenda i look forward to having many more chats with you throughout uh the live streams and then um also mike he i don't know if he's here tonight but he won the other uh consultation and he's going to gift his to someone else so I don't know how we're going to work that out but I thought that was kind of cool he says I'm going to give that to someone that's struggling right now so that's cool I thought that was really cool because yeah, that's we awesome. encourage each of you to mentor each someone other else and mentor each other or mentor each other yeah mentor someone else mentor each other help each other out you know because again Barb and I we don't pretend to know everything we've we've done a lot of things in the you know in the 43 years 
So, Mary Beth is here from Texas. Linda's here. Ray, Sunshine. Hey, um, Mary Beth from Texas. Good to welcome, see you. Thanks welcome. For, welcome all of you. Welcome Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, I can't. I, Karen Magali's here. Um, I think I've named everyone. Brenda's yeah. here. Mimi's here. You know, I remember now. I was trying to think of something, Barbara. We had a question from the UK. Uh, what was it? It, it was actually a, a stained glass person was working on a skylight. Oh, that's right. And was yes, wondering how to uh, install it. Yep. Now, we've done a lot of skylights. Uh, oh, gosh, we did that great big one over at the bed and breakfast over in Sumter that time. Remember that one? That oh was goodness, huge. That, was, yeah. that, that encompassed was huge. the entire and the Parsons table. dining area. Yeah, and then we had a... A skylight that we removed from Georgetown Steel and installed it at the Parsons Table restaurant in Little River, South Carolina. So, and that was that was like an eight by twelve skylight. Anyway, all of these skylights were had rebar cages built under them, not hanging on top of them, but they should be under them so that the glass is laying on the rebar rather than pulling on the rebar, if that makes sense. I hope that helps you out. You should always have a protective glass above it if it's going to be projected to the outside. But hanging it from the inside, your rebar, I would use reinforcing steel bar, make a cage so that it's aesthetically correct for the window. And even though some of the bars may be in places that you don't like them, Explain to your customer or your client that if it isn't done correctly, you will be back and it won't be for free. So you want to be able to do that. Your skylight should lay on your rebar and your rebar should go all the way through and into some sort of a jam next to it to make sure that the weight of everything is sitting on those steel bars. Well, that was a question. Uh, how do you hold the skylights up? Like this. <laughs> and Patsy, you're another winner, right? Do, have we talked about when you're going to do your consultation? I'm not sure. Yeah, so Patsy is a winner, right? Yeah. Yeah, the skylight, you, you know, you usually, you're going to have your frame, then you're going to have your window, let's say two by two. Well, your rebars need to go cut, be f mitered on the back edge and go so that they lay on the wood. The wood is what's going to hold the rebars, right? Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit carried away on this, but if you don't do it right, you're going to find that skylight back on the, on the dining room table. Yeah, um... Possibly you could do a sketch of how that needs to be. All the installations are basically on skylights are safety issues. So right. you really need to know what you're doing. So if you well, need a consultation with Ed, if you're doing a skylight, he'd be glad to tell you what the Yeah, because you, you need to understand the, the, the building the codes code, for yes. glazing above your head. And they, you know, life changes when everything gets above your head. Think, think about this, okay? Think about this. A piece of quarter inch glass, which is what's on like your tabletop in your bedroom or something. A piece of quarter inch glass, 12 inches by 12 inches, falling from 10 feet in the air, will take your head right off your shoulders. Yeah. So. Go, go think about that. So no, that's, that's no, weight no amount, versus yeah. It's, no amount of insurance, uh, liability insurance is going to make up for some kind of right. dreadful thing. So there's like always that. safety so. glazing above your heads, or safety glazing, and above swimming pools and hotels, all that stuff. None of that stuff can get to you because of the way it's designed. Your skylight, though, because and should be done with rebar. And so that because you want to be able to see if you put a piece of glass under your skylight stained glass, you're just going to have a lot of glare. Protect it from the outside. Bridge it from the inside. And from underneath so that the 
the window is actually the weight of it is on the rebar you don't want the rebar up here and the window pulling down on it small pieces small pieces of glass in your stained glass window they need to be small yeah it, you don't want big pieces like that four by six inches is going to be the biggest piece you should put but anyway in. You, yeah anyway. four by six that's right anyway right. there's okay. a lot of things to think about and and skylights are uh, very expensive to build because of the the process that has to be done to it uh, well that you need to make sure that you have all the codes uh, covered so right. that adds to the cost okay right yeah yeah it adds to the cost but you have to those are things you have to uh, work into your pricing when you do something like that. Um, Ed, I have Tiger glazing cement. Earlier something was said you have a glazing compound recipe. Is it on your website? Also, do you ever mix foiling small pieces along with using lead cane? So that's... That is two right. questions and the answer to both of them is yes. You better believe it. Yes. So... It's our, on the website, our glazing on the tools and merch. Yeah, our glazing recipe is on the oh, tools and right. merch page. And I always, not always, but a lot of times I will mix copper foil and lead together because sometimes the lead will just eat up the glass because you're trying to get such small pieces. Yes. Detail. Mix it up and use different lead profiles as well. We used four different lead profiles in the Live Oak project and you could see each one of them from the floor looking up 17 feet in the air it was awesome yeah so it was and uh and and you can it doesn't really show but it 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 does it provides the, the, the way the light comes it through yeah it's the dimension I yeah it provides say. that aesthetic look of dimension um so puerto rico uh Ephraim, Excellent videos. Congratulations from Puerto Rico. That's hey, very thank you. nice. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm now glad that y'all are are are, uh, are getting things back together after all the storms in Puerto Rico. So Ooh. God bless you, my friend. Okay, let me see. I'm, I've been somehow. Let me see. Is this a question? I am looking at a small piece as spirit glass out made of mexico it's perfect to make my grandson his giraffe okay here's a question i think i got in the middle of someone's conversation <laughs> okay art r if you're making a panel that has clear components is it okay to use window glass you better believe it yes sir you betcha Yes. Uh, Barbara and I are starting on 12 cabinet doors tomorrow so <laughs> yeah and sometimes it's the perfect um you know yeah just clean it make sure you know it scratches like any other glass so just make sure your work area your work surface is clean you can use clear window glass unless they want little ripples and for like an antique or something yes use window glass okay. but use eighth inch don't use three thirty seconds use the one eighth window glass please right and then you um a lot of the old windows from houses built in the early 1900s in the south used clear window glass maybe because they couldn't get the colored glass like you they could up, up north, north where it was coming where the furnaces in by, were, and they were coming in by boat yeah. by boat but anyway a lot of clear glass leaded glass very very pretty um sure mix it up yeah that mix it up y'all mm. have fun with it this you know working with glass is so exciting and i get excited about it and I've done a, you know, we're all working with this stained glass and working, being creative and doing our art. And it's just really, it's right. really exciting every time another door opens for you. That's right. And so uh, if you like what we're teaching here and you're getting something out of it yeah then, you know don't you think they ought to ring that bell i think you ought to ring the bell <laughs> and if you're if you're just kind of hanging out off on the stage right go ahead and check in and ask us a question i know we we won't know who you are but you know what we sure would love to have you on board with everybody else asking questions maybe even mentor someone 
come on, subscribe if you if we can help you out. You know, we're helping you out with all this. This is a great, great, great way to spend a Monday evening, and we're so happy to be here, everybody. Yeah, and this is a great group. This group right here, this they got it. it going on. That's right. <laughs> and so we learn more. I think we learn more in this live stream than we can teach you in a video. Of course, we have to do the videos for you because you got to learn. Those well, you've got to things. see, yeah. But I really feel like we learn a lot at the live streams. Well, I learn I, a lot too. I do too. And we learn a lot about how everybody works because everyone works differently. Everybody works differently. So, um, Ray uh, wants to know if he, he can send you a pic of his latest uh, project. Ray, He's I'd love to see. His endocrinologist. You, endocrinologist. Yes, we'd love to see. That. We'd love to see it. You've got my email address. Shoot it to me, Ray. Yeah. Please, I'd love to see it. So maybe we can start showing people's work on the live streams. Uh, we'll have to see how that works. Should, yeah, I, we'll I don't have know to, how to do it, but maybe we can work that in. So we can sometime. share everyone's work with everyone. So that's or do a cool. do a drawing so that you can share your work or something like that. That'd be cool, right? Yeah. The winner. Oh, we could do like a, maybe we could do a small, um, oh, a show. Hmm. An individual show for someone who encompass five pieces of your work. Oh. We could do a drawing You're for You're crazy. That. Um, you are crazy. Okay. So they say I'm sick. He's sick, <laughs> yeah. He is sick. He's sick. And his cutting is sick. And it's wicked. Okay. Uh, you guys, I got, I have, it's hard for me to see, and I... We're getting ready to get cataract surgery as soon as I get my leg get, done. So if you see me when I'm sitting down like this, it's really hard, and I do all kind of typos and everything. It's really embarrassing, so I'm going to have my eye fixed soon. Okay. It's not really funny, but... No, it's not. I, not at all. I, I tell Ed I can't see... I'm blind in one eye and can't see out of the other, and that is how it is because I can hardly see right now. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I sorry, just had to stand up. My leg is like really hurting, but that's okay. okay. I'm comfortable now. I got it in a spot. I guess everybody knows how that is. You get it in the spot, let it lay there for a minute. Okay. Let's see. C O E to join us. He is full of knowledge. Oh, Pat Co. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we've been talking to a lot of people about, uh, Ed's going to learn while he's uh, convalescing, he's going to learn, what is the name of the program? Rapid Resizer. Rapid Resizer, and so we're going to share that whole journey with you guys. So we're learning that as 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 well. We'll let you know how that goes. We're excited about yeah, it. Yeah, because we're going to, we well, no, I guess we did. We, we've ordered a 24-inch printer. So we're gonna we're gonna definitely be able to rapid resize it. Yeah. And try what we're trying to do is eliminate having so many pieces of paper to stick together because when you start doing that, everything changes. It always changes just that little bit. And uh, uh, so we're gonna we're hoping we can do that, and then maybe we can, you know, help uh, help you all out or something. Okay. I think it's time for glass chat. What? Because we're. Cause we're I think it is time for glass chat. Time for glass chat. chat? Yeah, it's time for glass uh -oh, chat. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right, y'all. So, so, go ahead. Tonight is kind of goofy, but but I want you to. This is something because you know we all work, we all work on a budget, right? Yeah. So by working on that budget, we all have to. There's certain things that we need in our studio. And I'm gonna show you what five dollars buys you, and it and it lasts actually quite a long time. Okay, so a dollar. This is this is one of the best putty brushes for putty and lead windows that I've ever had. This is a, another dollar fifty. That's three dollars. This brush is great for polishing and cleaning up the glazing compound after you apply it with this brush, $1, that's $4. And before I do anything with 
puttying, I put on a pair of rubber gloves. That's another dollar. Five dollars, y'all. I can, I can putty. I don't know how many. I used one of these brushes and puttied all of those windows for the Live Oak project. And I still have life left in this brush. So anyway, just something simple. These are like the Dollar, dollar General, Dollar Tree. Anyway, dollar, 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 dollar. And y'all can imagine... We go through a lot of glass cleaner here, so we buy these like we buy these bottles ten at a time. Because we just do a lot of tabletops and everything. So it's really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. But when anytime we can save money, it doesn't matter how big of a company or how small of a company you are. Every little think about it, single edge razor blade costs 18 cents. Think about that. Okay. So tonight's tool. Everybody, okay. you may have one or you may not. If you don't have one, I'd, you should probably try and get one as, you know, whenever you can because it'll make, it'll make your life a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm bringing up, now I'm bringing up a piece of clear window glass. Everybody can see this. Clear window glass. All right. So we're going to talk tonight a little bit about the Glass Star Circle Strip Cutter. Now I'm not going to show you all how to use the strip cutter because you have to have a really smooth edge on your table and personally, you know me, I would rather use my square to cut strips out than try and fool with the strip cutter. But the circle cutter, I don't have any problems with. I really like this little circle cutter and I use it for my small circles even in the back when I'm cutting heavy glass. So just keep in mind, and I'm going to stand up for this, so you're going to see my hands here, but I'm going to stand up because sitting down and cutting glass normally doesn't work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my index finger here, and I'm going to wind this up, and I'm going to push down, Okay, did you hear that? Bunk. Don't go any further than that, guys and gals. If you're cutting circles, you only need to go around and stop right where you start, okay? So, I'm taking my grouse and pliers. I'm going to do a little run here. I'm coming around. I'm chasing that run. See it? You see my index finger? Now I got my middle finger involved. Here we go. And I'm just scoring this around. Okay, so now you heard that last little pop. Now we're going to Pop it. Did you hear that? I know you did because I heard it. So now we're going to take this. And before I take this circle out of here, I'm going to show you something. If you notice, like this is the piece that's going in the window. And I, what I did is I just left myself about a half inch all the way around it. You don't need to try and take it a bunch of it out at one time. And we're just going to score it, just like that. And now we're going to take our running pliers. Boom. Okay, so now it's coming off. Okay. So now we have a circle. Just like that. So all we have to do really is just clean this up a little bit because remember, gang, once again, when circles break, they break back and forth. Every time I touch that with the plier, the glass broke at a different angle, even though it stayed within that circle. And now, all we're doing when we're cutting glass, everybody, okay, and I'm, we're going to go over this one more time because it's imperative. 
when we're cutting glass, this surface is smooth. This wheel is smooth. It is carbide steel, and we're going to run this down just like that. Now, what we've done with that score right there, everybody, is we have only, okay, and only have we separated the molecules on the surface of the glass, which in turn allows the glass or the score to follow the separation of the molecules, which in turn gives you your cut glass, okay? So it's all about, it's all of, it's really, it's about the separation of molecules. Okay? And remember again, too, glass will run to its weakest point. If you have a skip or something like that in it. Anyway, that's it tonight for Ed's Glass Chat. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't have a glass star circle cutter, go ahead and get one because you surely will enjoy it. And if you're freehand in circles, you know, and I know, you can't grind a circle and keep it round. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> you can't grind a circle and keep it round, y'all. It's like trying to grind a piece of border. You can't keep it straight. Okay. So, um, we have some more questions that have come in. Thank you, Ed. Awesome. That was very interesting. And uh, people love to watch you and your glass cutting sorcery oh that's awesome <laughs> now so I'm a it's sorcerer. very interesting yes okay. it is it's very interesting so um well, i hope i explain the tool correctly to you and that you understand it and it, that circle that circle cutter you know barb it takes a little bit of practice oh yeah definitely but now i have i have other circle cutters in the back and they're made for cutting different other glasses besides just window pane glass. So. Okay, so we're going to go back into the Q&A because we have more questions that came in. So uh, Julie wants to know, has anyone used Glass Eye 2000 to create your own patterns? Please advise as she's getting ready to invest in a program. So I'm not familiar with it. I think that some of you guys have answered Julie, but if you could help Julie on that, that would be really great. Right. We're, we've been talking to Joey. He, he's usually here. Um, Y'all know Joey. And he has used Rapid Resize, and that's, um, and that's the one that he said that he uses. He likes it, and I believe that's the one that we're going to use. But I have not looked at glass well, size. Well, so. and I think the, the whole thing about any of these programs, y'all, is the money you spend on the printer. You, you can't just keep taping eight and a half by well, 11 pieces of paper together. It depends together. on what they are doing. If you if they're doing um, small sun catchers, oh, sun that's, catchers be yeah. that's perfect. That's awesome. But now if you're going to do big, it's a, it will be a dream to get the big printer because it's not cheap. So we're, we're making an investment. We're there. hoping that we can get a return on our investment yeah because the printer is expensive and barb and i we've been talking about it all day today so you don't normally when we talk about something that long you know it's quite an investment oh joey's here hey joey yes, yeah we're looking at it buddy resize yes yes so um let's see joey what size printer do you use he, he dreams about a big printer okay <laughs> never mind that's the answer to that question my friend no go go ahead joey you answer him what size printer do you use joey uh carly Brendel uses procreate on the ipad she draws her patterns and cuts out the pattern on her cricket Okay, now I've heard of that, and we did, uh, we do have a cricket coming, but we've got it coming for other specific reasons. But that's another so, reason uh, to use Karen, it. Karen, did you hear that? How uh, Car Carly does that? Because um, Karen has started doing stained glass, and I noticed that she attaches her patterns to her glass as well. Right. So that's a different process than we use, but yes, that will work perfect. It is. 
But everyone, I've, and I've said it before, everyone has their own technique. And, you know, you can always, everybody's always open for new stuff, you know. Okay, so when you get, uh, Magali has the question, when you get a dirty piece of glass from your stock, do you wash your glass with soap and water or glass cleaner, and does it matter which one you do? It doesn't matter which one you do. The main thing is you get all that grime, gr dirt and grime off of it so that it doesn't clog up your cutter head. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Uh, you know, in the, in the back when we're cutting up big sheets of glass, they use... They throw desiccant in between the sheets to make them slide so they don't scratch. Now, I'm talking big sheets of glass, like 6 foot by 10 foot, whatever. Anyway, they throw, they throw that on there so that the sheets of glass slide. And so, yeah, if you can imagine, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey said he just uses a regular printer. Okay. Just a regular printer. Well, that's what Ed's going to be learning on. He, we, we've got a little printer at the house, so we're going to see how it goes, how he likes it. I mean, that may not be the program for him. I don't think on these programs you have to make a long commitment. You I don't. Think it's you a can, it's a monthly you can thing. Go monthly. So or you know, just it might pay take for a, a year. Yeah. Programs figure out. Someone just said Procreate, uh, Rapid Resizer, and then the other one, uh, the Glass Eye. Two thousand Glass Eye. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, cool. Yeah, so the, uh, the one that we're looking at getting, the Rapid Resizer, it's just a program that you download right off of them once you purchase it and they give you your key to Is get in. Is it in the cloud? Yeah. Okay, well then you don't have to download it. It's no, you cloud. don't. It's in the cloud. Okay, that's good. That's about how much I know. Because your new computer does not, your computer. Doesn't have a memory. <laughs> No, it's all in the cloud. It's all in the cloud. Okay. Per month. Joey said yes, per month. Yeah, per month. So that's what you want. You don't want a long You don't want a long commitment, like right. Because it might not work out just the way you hope. But I think, Joey, if I'm not mistaken, it's like $120 a year, which is... Whatever it is. That's, yeah. You know, that sounds great. Yeah. So. Okay. Do we have... Okay. Do you sell your... Here's another question just came in. Do you sell your glass art in other stores? I am interested in getting my glass in other small stores, and I have never looked into wholesale before. Carly's question. Carly, we used to do that. We now only wholesale our Christmas ornaments, and but we have a minimum order, and we do not do consignment. Okay? If someone wants to order your stuff, they need to pay for it. You need to give them their discount, but they need to pay for it. You do not have time to run around looking for your money or looking for your customer. Unless it's your best friend. Unless and she it's owns your best art friend. Store. <laughs> and she owns an art store and, and you know you can trust her. But uh, prefer to not do consignment, be paid for your goods up front. And, and give them an option. Well, you know what? If the angel doesn't sell, but the Santa Clauses do, we'll trade the angel out for some Santa Clauses for you. No problem. Okay? Work, work with them like that. But get your money when you drop off your, your, uh, your order to them. I think the main thing, if you're going to be selling to other stores, you need to have your price list figured out to where you are you, you've got to make money at wholesale pricing so if you're only making money at your regular price don't cut your price in half and go wholesale raise your retail price and so that, that your wholesale price reflects reflects you making money reflects you making money so whatever that is whatever your price is 30 percent off of retail or 50 percent off of retail um, you got to get that retail price up so that it makes sense to the person that's buying it. Because right. if you're selling it, say you go to a market and you're selling your little sun catchers or your little pieces for $20 a piece. And you sold them wholesale for $20 a piece. She's going to have to mark them up or he's going to have to mark them up. And then he's got to charge way more, and then you're out on the street selling it for less. 
and it, it's you not really. You can't keep really, your customers up. <laughs> you can't keep your wholesale people happy. So you want to be at a place that makes them happy and right. you happy and your customers happy. So figure that all out before you decide to go, um, you know, approaching. Knocking on doors, yeah. Approaching your, uh, your customers, your new customers, your new yeah, your wholesale, new wholesale customers. customers. So wholesale is tough. And um, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of new it wholesale is. this yeah. year. So a lot of, we're working on them. We've not done too much of it before. We've, we've done it, but not a whole lot. No, and we're working on a new brochure for this year. So um, yeah. a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and we appreciate you guys because this year, last year was exciting. This year is even going to be more exciting. Oh, I know it. It's awesome. Our channel is just growing like crazy, and that's because of you guys. And we really appreciate you. Right? Yeah. So. Oh, so Karen said Pat, Pat Co. uses um, Glass Eye 2000. And he does excellent patterns. I've seen his patterns on stained glass attics. And he and uh, Karen can attest to it. He did a fantastic job for her. So kudos to you, Pat. I love those patterns. So, yeah. So just. Do the trial. Uh, do they have a free month trial, free 30-day trial? I don't know. Or just pay the $10 and try it out. Yeah, because I don't think either, any of them you have to sign like a big contract. It's by, it's, it's by the month. If you forget to cancel it, then shame on you. <laughs> They're going to take you $10 and get them next month. But we'll keep you up to date, and you guys let us know. I mean, we may try all three, four of them. I, don't, I, don't I got know. a month to be He's home. He's got a so. month to be home. So all kinds of fun things going on um i think that uh if there are no more questions have i forgot anybody have i forgot any questions here if you have oh any questions let's see um i don't see yeah so any. you know using these these uh, programs to like rapid resize or glass eye 2000 any of those programs y'all you know ed is old school He's not only old, but he's old school. For the last 36 years plus, I've drawn all of my patterns by hand. And I'm going to look forward to making a change That's and right. kind of bringing myself, taking the knowledge I have of drawing and my, my drawing skills and maybe attaching them to this so we'll see well you will do a fantastic job because you already have the background knowledge you need to make those sizes work when you transfer it from computer to to uh, the the working cartoon so you you'll you'll do fine all right thanks buddy <laughs> <laughs> he'll do fine yeah no you're right I'm probably not I'm, I'm really not that old actually yeah, we yeah we get patterns everywhere. Magali says she used the pattern from her shower. She used the pattern from her shower curtain. Hey, whatever hey. works. <laughs> well, I tell you, some of the some of the neatest patterns are in quilting books, and you know what? They're already um, out on squares. Um, we have one more question. Um, our customer from Puerto Rico. No. Puerto Rico, yeah. I think, yes. Yeah. Uh, she's been practicing, he's been practicing with uh, the foil method, and um, can they patina 50-50? You can patina 50-50, it's not going to be as dark because there's not as much tin. However, just let you in on a little secret in Puerto Rico, use baking soda and water to clean your window to break down the acid, to neutralize the acid before you patina it. And you can patina 50-50 and 60-40. 60-40 just turns out darker because of the amount of tin in it. That's all. Happy patinaing, my friend. Don't forget to clean it well. Uh, another question came up during the week, and uh, that just reminded me. Someone wanted to know how to get the flux off their fingers. Well, you really shouldn't have flux on your fingers. but you should uh, wear rubber gloves not, if you need to. Yeah, rubber gloves. But, yeah, get it off your hands. But... Use baking soda Dawn 
dishwashing detergent yeah. water, water and just uh, neutralize that flux. If you get enough heavy. flux, if you get enough uh, patina on your fingertips, you can taste it. And that's way too oh, much. Oh, the flux, well. you can taste it. And the, the flux, pins. you can taste it. Please use the Ruby Flux. Make sure you have adequate ventilation, whether you're doing patina or you're soldering or you're puttying or any type of work with your stained glass. Please make sure you've got adequate ventilation. And wear your gloves for patina, for flux. So chemical but do stuff, not, yeah. But yeah. You have to be careful with gloves when you're soldering. We don't wear gloves when we solder. Some people do, but... Um, yeah, I don't. Hot. <laughs> I don't. Melted rubber doesn't really appeal to me. No, and if I'm working on a sun catcher, I will put on one of my leather welding gloves so that if when the solder drops on my on my hand, I don't have to worry about little pucker marks everywhere. So That's right. It's been an awesome night, Barb. It has been an awesome night, and we so enjoy seeing everyone and listening to all your questions. Um, we'll have another video coming out this week day uh, three day three um uh, i had to file all our tax returns to do this this week it's all mail so we've been to the post office already everything's mailed uncle sam was calling my name and uh so uh i had to get that out of the way and we will let's see let's see if we have one more comment or any comments or any questions before we leave we'll be happy to uh Carly loves her rubber gloves. <laughs> yeah, it does help, right? Welder gloves are great. Welder gloves are good for sun catchers. Just one. Yeah. Keep, don't put it in the hand that's holding your soldering iron. Hold it. Put it in the hand that's getting all the solder. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, because, right. I mean, that'll ruin you if you're not careful. I mean, if you're not careful, it will ruin you. Okay, so uh, any more questions? Do we have any more comments, questions, uh, complaints? No. Nope. Anything. But I will, I'm going to say one thing before I take off. And that is, y'all, thank you for all the well wishes. And uh, I'm going to get through this thing and uh, and we'll, we'll get through it together. That's right. That's we'll right. keep you apprised of the situation. We're good. And you'll, if you guys uh, subscribe to the channel and you ring that little bell, then you get the community posts. <laughs> You'll get the community posts. And so that's how I'm going to let you all know how uh, Ed's doing uh, Monday. I'll put something up on the community post and let you all know he's doing good and he's home and safe and uh, maybe tucked in on my tucked covers. Tucked in with his little puppy. Oh, I know Dixie will be up right up. <laughs> mm, man, she'll be there. Okay, y'all, we're going to go. We're going to go grab a bite to eat. We it's good to see you. everybody. Thank you so much. We Warm will. hugs to y'all. Thanks again. <laughs>